Exotics, a highly debated topic as well as a sensitive one. And on that note, today we will be showcasing some new exotics that I recently acquired. Let's jump into it. Now before I continue and the comments start lighting up, hear me out. Yes, I have lots of ants here, and why would I need exotics? Well, first of all, all of the invasive species that I have can't survive in our climate during the winter, as well as I have a good four years of experience in this hobby. Now the benefits of me keeping exotics will allow me to upload all year round, meaning I won't be going inactive for five months at a time anymore. With that out of the way, let's continue. So now, let's take a look at our first exotic colony. So starting us off is a colony of Tetramorium immigrants. And this colony has around 10 to 15 workers and loads of brood. Now this species is native to Canada, but not where I live. These were actually caught all the way over in Ottawa. Now I've actually heard so much about them, but I've never had a chance to keep one. So I'm excited to see how fast they grow in the years to come. Now Tetramorium can sting, but I'm not sure how powerful it is, and I really don't want to find out. For now, this colony will stay small, until next summer when they will most likely have a population boom. Now, on to our next colony, or should I say queen? This gorgeous Pognarmex occidentalis queen is still in her founding stages. And if I'm lucky, she will have her first generation before hibernation. Right now she has possibly two larvae and a hefty batch of eggs. Now onto the next tube. This species is not exactly an exotic, but just really hard to find if you don't know where to look. This is a founding three queen Solenopsis molesta colony. They originally had a batch of eggs, but it seems to have vanished, so I don't know where it went. They may have decided to wait till spring to refound a colony. You may have heard these little guys before, as their more common name is thief ants. And unlike most ants in the genus Solenopsis, these guys are known to be more separate, as they display different traits that Invicta and Geminetta don't show. For one thing, it's easy to notice the coloring of them. Some queens are a pale yellow, while other ones are more darker. This is due to how they nest. In the wild, they are primarily subterranean, meaning they nest deep underground. A feature they do share with most Solenopsis is the rate in which they grow. They are super fast, and with three queens, it'll be awesome to watch them grow. Now our next exotic is a Solenopsis Invicta Queen. I originally caught her back on my trip to California. And I don't advise bringing invasive species back home if you live in the same climate, but here in Canada, it gets to be minus 40 in the winter sometimes. So she stands no chance. And to further my point, she needs heat. I acquired a heating cable about three weeks ago, and in that time, she started laying her eggs. In the two months prior, she laid nothing, and was mostly dormant. So I'm excited to see her development throughout the winter, as she won't need to hibernate. Oh boy, I'm excited for this next one. Chromatogaster Cressy. I have always wanted Chromatogaster, as the workers and queens are so cute. Something I recently found out is that they actually grow faster than I thought. This actually never occurred to me, and I'm excited for next spring when she will start up again. For our next colony, we have another Tetramorium. I absolutely love these guys. The workers' little square heads is so cute. The way they pick up the brood and just scurry it around mad just because of a little bit of light is kind of funny actually, but so cool to watch. Now for our next queen, we have another Pognarmex occidentalis queen. Now her brood pal isn't nearly impressive as the last one, but she's making her way along. I'm not so sure if she'll get her workers before hibernation, but she's well on her way. She's also just as gorgeous as the last one. 
I'm pretty sure this is the most stunning species of ant I've filmed so far. And I can't wait till they get workers. Something else to note about them is their diet is a little bit different. Usually I feed my colonies a bit of honey and a mealworm, but for them, I usually feed them that as well as a little bit of walnuts. They just love them. This is where they get their main source of protein in the wild anyway, and walnuts are very juicy and oily on the inside. Something I actually didn't realize before now. Now there are a few colonies that I got, but they deserve their own video, as they're in bigger nests now. Now in the last video, I promised I'd feature the Campanatus in this video. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the correct shots that I was planning on doing, so they're not going to be featured in this video, but they will have one coming soon. I can't promise it will be the next one, but maybe the one after that. From what I can see, they're really into clumping right now, and it's really hard to get actual shots as they don't really want to separate. This is probably due to hibernation coming up soon, and Campanatus usually go into hibernation earlier than most ants, as they're bigger and need more time to produce glycerol in their blood so they don't freeze. The difference is, this hibernation, they won't be needing to survive minus 40, they'll only need to survive plus 4. So in reality, they don't really need to hibernate early, as they won't physically be going below 0, as they'll be in a fridge. But, most likely, I'll share some of the shots that I'll try to get in the future again. Now I do want to formally apologize about this summer. I did say I was going to be active during the summer, and in all honesty, I really wasn't. I apologize for being gone for 5 months, and I still plan on uploading almost weekly videos. Now if a video is taking me longer than normal, and I miss my expected upload date, which is usually Sunday, don't be alarmed. It just means I'm spending a few extra days to get that video out. If you're not already following my Instagram, it's in the top link of the description. I'm almost at 500 followers, so go ahead and help me to get 500. Also, if you want to check out a really good ant store, the Ant Keeping Depot will be the second link in the description. They have top-notch quality products, and I'd really recommend them. Also, the support lately has been awesome, as we're almost at 1,500 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, and it really helps me out. Also, if you like what you see on this channel, please hit the like button, as it actually helps promote this video to new people. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And in case you don't already know, I upload weekly videos, so tune in next week for another new video. Anyways guys, I want to thank you all for being amazing people and being an amazing part of the ant keeping hobby. I'll catch you in the next one.